So welcome everybody. Uh, today's session is uh, protocol best practices. Um, really, we want to highlight some new features and development that um, really is designed for, for protocol writers uh, with the goal of you know, really, really enhancing and beefing up uh, protocols. So that way you can inform and instruct uh, with, with, with confidence is, is really the theme. And, and we'll see that as we discuss some, some various features, some tips, and then some, some other um, tools that have been, been in ARM for a while, uh, whether or not you've, you've used them before, we'll try to, to cover a, a variety of things today. So first up is the uh, kind of the biggest uh, development project we had in the, the last ARM release. Um, it's this new tool called Review Protocol Entries. I just want to, to show what this will do. Um, really, it's a wizard that will uh, appear during trial validation to have the, the uh, user review information that was entered in the protocol and hasn't been changed since in the trial. So the, the idea being when you are filling in a protocol, you are really um, putting in instructions of what the trial should do, or maybe what, you know, what the plan is for, for any trials that are going to be performed as part of the, ex the experiment. Then when we generate a trial for a particular location, all of that information is copied into the trial. But the trouble may be that now that it's in the trial, that information is, is you know, less of an instruction and more of documentation now. So we really want to have a way to make it clear that uh, when you're in the trial, that anything that was originally in the protocol, it is true and accurate. We don't want that to just something to slip through the cracks, even though it was instructions, it never got updated or wasn't changed to be what actually occurred. So that was really the goal of, of this development. And I think this wizard um, really helps to ensure that nothing gets through the cracks. So uh, you can see on the screenshot, we're highlighting information that was entered in the protocol and, and hasn't been changed since. Anything that either has been changed or was filled in later once the, the trial was created, that is not highlighted. You can still see that information on the screen, but it's, you know, we're not drawing attention to that. And then the goal is during the validation process, we're, we're basically just having a, a confirmation that a pair of eyes has been on what's highlighted in green here, and we can confirm that that is correct. Nothing's falling through the cracks, nothing got forgotten. This is true of what, what occurred. So as I mentioned, this, uh, this process is, is performed during the trial validation. And really, um, it, it can, will come up throughout the trial. <clears throat> so as you're completing different components of the, the trial, uh, these sections will start to be included in the validation. <clears throat> so specifically, if you look at the assessment column, uh, as soon as you enter a rating date, that's really the, the signifier to ARM that this has occurred. This assessment has been performed. So let's review any header information, any description about that assessment um, that came from the protocol. So that will, will trigger any, any columns that um, have the date included will now be included for, for that confirmation step. Any additional columns that have not yet had their rating date filled in, we haven't done that assessment yet, so there is no point to confirm them yet. So it's, it will only take the chunk that matters, essentially, uh, that is, has been done so far. And really the exact same idea for applications as well. As soon as there's an application date, now the, uh, the different fields related to an application, which are spread across a few different sections in the site description, those will all be presented, highlighted, uh, what information was, was there in the protocol. And then again, that confirmation uh, only for the application codes or only for the assessment columns that have been completed so far. So hopefully, um, 
on the trialist side, it won't be a, I have to review the entire trial in one sitting um, and, and anything like that. It'll be more of a, a, a slow uh, here and there as you're, you're validating, filling things in, you'll review those components. Then finally, once the trial status is set to final, all of the other sections of, of like the site description will then be included in that validation. And we'll see that in a moment. We also added a menu item under the tools menu to trigger this review at any time as well. So it, you wouldn't have to wait uh, for the validation. You wouldn't have to set the trial status to final if you wanted to go through the process of reviewing those items. Um, this, this menu item will, will trigger that review. And so really the, the goal of, of this functionality um, hopefully is, is to really encourage protocols to have more information in them. So let's really um, make sure our protocol has um, all the information uh, to inform and instruct without that worry of, well, I hope if I'm putting this in, it'll get updated later. Something like a, you know, the, the pest stage at application. Okay, you have to have to wait until uh, something's at a certain stage. Well, I'll put that in in the protocol as an instruction of this is the target. This is what we're we're hoping for at for the timing of that application or whatever the case may be. Without that concern of well, hopefully whatever stage is truly there, the trialist will update. Here now with this tool, that will be caught for sure. That trialist when they validate the the study, they will see that prompt that value will be highlighted if they hadn't already changed it to be what is true. So hopefully just boosting the confidence of, of what can be put in the protocol. And then on the flip side, if there's more information in the protocol, that's gonna be more information in the trial and hopefully it'll save time for the trialist. Fewer things to put in if everything goes according to plan and also can save them time uh, with this wizard instead of having to manually go through every section and really being careful to remember what was filled in before and what wasn't. Now ARM is just presenting that information to them um, right away and, and make it very easy to see on the screen what information they need to double check that, you know, that they hadn't entered in the first place to make sure it's accurate. So here's a short demonstration video kind of showing how we fill in an application date that will trigger application A to be reviewed. Along the same lines here now, if we're doing an assessment, when we fill in a date there, that actually triggered all four of those columns are linked together. So we'll say those four assessments were all done. Now, when we trigger the regular validation in the study, we will see the different sections. And so we're highlighting information that that wasn't filled in by ourselves. And then we can confirm the component. You can skip. Let me just pause this for a moment. It's going a little fast. Um, you can click the skip button down here. So if whatever section on the screen is maybe not, um, not what the person running ARM at that moment in time is, is aware of, you know, maybe I'm just the the tech in the field that took an assessment. And so I, I really don't have the details on the application right now. So I'm not really the right person to be confirming the application details. I can skip over that section. And next time the trial is validated, that application section in this case will come back up because it still needs to be confirmed. And so you can uh, give, give a little flexibility to those that are reviewing. Uh, so that way they're not just blindly reviewing everything just to get it to go away but instead we can make sure the right person reviews the right components. Now, as we're confirming the different sections, now we're on the assessment headers. And again, anything that the trialist had selected and had filled in or has changed since it was filled in are in white. And then everything else, you know, we can see all of those headers that were filled in for them and they can confirm that was, is how it was done. And just to show that review protocol entries tool icon will do the whole, the whole thing. So now we see all of the sections of the site description. So we see all the crop details, for example, um, 
which aren't related to a particular date. Um, so all of the other sections we will see. And now we will look at the, the different pest descriptions and whatever other sections of that site description are all included here in, in this step now that we've either, either run it from that tools menu or if we had marked the trial as final, then those components would be included in the validation. So that's, that was really the, the big enhancement that, uh, that was added here recently in, in ARM. So, so as long as you've got the, the latest, latest version of ARM, the 2021.7, then as you're creating, as you're filling in protocols and sending them out, whether you create the trial or send the protocol out for the trialist to create the trial, um, then that will have this, this tracking involved. So that way, uh, when it comes to validate the, that information that came from the protocol will, will be um, highlighted and, and required to be confirmed. One other thing to, to maybe demonstrate a, a feature that, that is, has been in ARM for some time, although I think it's um, kind of criminally underrated perhaps, is the, the merge functionality. And I think it kind of goes hand in hand, maybe with these the protocol entries um, feature that if, if you're starting in on a new protocol, um, thinking that, well, maybe this year's studies pretty similar to last year's, uh, a lot of people like to just go to last year's file and do a, a save as or copy the file and, and rename it and start from, from there. Um, I'd like to encourage maybe a, a different workflow that gives you a little more control over what, what will come in from last year's study. So if you create a new protocol, and I'm just gonna go quickly through and select the G all, and just take my default settings here. Uh, if you create the new protocol, then use the merge function. So from the tools menu, there's a merge. And this is really a, I like to call it like a, a mega copy paste is, is really what it is. Um, I think merge makes it sound like we're doing something a little different, um, but really all the merge does is allows you to choose a file that you've already created that already exists somewhere. Um, here's in my study list, I've got this example protocol that's on my computer. And I'm going to be able to open up this protocol and select specific sections from that file to copy into the protocol I have open in ARM right now. And that's re really all it's doing is, is a targeted copy and paste. So you can see on my screen, I can pick the different sections from the protocol that I want to bring in. So maybe I know my list of treatments is pretty close to the same as last year. So let me bring all of those treatments in. And maybe my protocol description, um, I'll be able to actually choose which sections of the protocol description in the next step. So we'll get to see that. Um, and then if I had you know, assessment data headers as well in that protocol, I could bring them in as well. You'll see if, if you're doing the same functionality with the merge can be done with a trial, there'll be a few more options available uh, if you were bringing, you know, copying data or copying plots or things like that. You can also bring in any study rules uh, that are in these different sections. So for example, in that protocol that I'm copying from, if I had uh, different study rules related to the treatments, or, or maybe I had study rules to, to make sure that the, the rating date is filled in in my headers, something like that, then I can choose whether those rules should come in uh, with this copy as well. So I'm gonna turn that on and say, yes, I'll want that as well. So let's bring all of the treatments uh, we'll soon pick the protocol description sections and the, the data headers. 
and we're going to copy that information from last year's protocol or whatever other protocol we wanted to select, we will get to selectively copy that information. So now this next section is because we chose the protocol description, we can choose what sections of the protocol description should be copied. So may, maybe I know the, the objectives, that, that same write-up is gonna be close to the same, I only have to change it. Uh, and the trial establishment guidelines, yeah, those will probably be about the same. Um, different contacts, I don't wanna copy those across because I'll have new people involved this year, um, but the crops and pests will be the same. I'll skip over and maybe just bring in the application information and the instructions. So again, uh, the goal being that you can really target what does come across and what doesn't. Instead of just doing a save as or copying last year's file, now you have to make sure that you go into every section of the, the study to make sure there isn't something extra or outdated in the file. With the merge, we can be very selective of what comes in. And by default, all of the this merge, this copying into the existing study is, is, is only additive. So if I had filled anything in, in this protocol, it would not get overwritten with information from this merge. There's a couple of new options and you can see on that last screen as well, there's a couple of highlighted boxes. Those are new features from this last year. There's a couple of options if you want to instead change to be replacing some information, you can do that. That's some of those highlighted options. Um, but by default, again, it's only gonna be additive uh, it's going to add more crops and pests to my list. It's going to add more treatments. It's not going to overwrite anything that's already been filled in to this protocol. <clears throat> oh, and then I have, I'm running a test version. We're not quite ready to release the 2022.0, um, but it's coming quite possibly next week. Um, and so, of course, then you have some silly... Uh, Silly message come up because we're ironing that out. Um, but this this prompt you will see when you merge. Um, <clears throat> it's noticing that we're, we're copying information into this new protocol and it's offering to update date references. So if this was if we did select last year's study and we'll have all the 2021 references, ARM can actually <clears throat> excuse me they can update all of those references to be 2022 instead. So another advantage of the, the merge that ARM can, can update those dates. So we don't have something out of date already. <clears throat> so now we have information copied from that other study. So let's look at our treatments. We have a list of treatments that were from that other study already filled in for us now. You'll notice we don't have anything in the header because I didn't choose that section. So again, now we don't, don't have to worry about the incorrect information coming in. We had full control over what details came in. So we chose the establishment guidelines and the objectives. So all of that information was copied across, but for example, contacts, we did not want because we'd have to clear those out anyway and, and update with the, the correct people for this year. <clears throat> so that's all blank. And you can see study rules since we chose to bring in study rules, anything from those sections um, <clears throat> that we had chosen that did have study rules. And in this case, we had just two of them. It looks like requiring the GPS coordinates. So those came across as well. And I think we chose the assessment data was that last section and we should see some, some headers are filled in because those all came from that other protocol. <clears throat> So hopefully the, the merge can be a, a good tool for, for really copying information. I'd love to just rename that function to be like super copy or, or something because um, I think merge gives the, the wrong idea of what it's gonna do. It's, we're really just copying information from another file 
whether it's last year's study, you could do this with a trial. If you had you know, multiple trials in the same location, it's, it's great to use it for like weather data. You can put all the weather data into one, one study, all the soil and weather details for that trial. And then the next trial, you can just open up and merge and choose just those two sections. You don't want anything else to be copied over, but just that information, that's gonna be the same you know, for all of those trials at that one site. And it'll just copy just those sections you choose into that file that you have opened. And just to reiterate them, we've, we've merged this information into this protocol. Um, when we generate a trial from this protocol here, then all of this information that we see is going to be the components highlighted in that review protocol entries. So it doesn't matter that we use the merge. Um, it's all going to be considered the same as just regular information in this protocol that then when we create the trial, we'll make sure that the trialist reviews. All right, next topic. So this next one is another change here in, in the, within the last year um, to, to ARM. And I think it really impacts uh, protocol writing in the same vein as the, the review uh, protocol entries does. And so um, I guess to set the stage with this one, I'll really maybe describe how ARM did behave prior to this change. And then, and then kind of how it, how it behaves now. So previously, anywhere within ARM that you would have a value and a unit. You know, the two of them are kind of paired together here on the screen. I'm using like pest density or crop density, but there's all sorts of places where that's the case within ARM that you have a numerical value that's recorded and then you have the unit of measure. Those two are inherently linked, of course, because they both are tied to you know, whatever it is you're documenting. So within the ARM validation, ARM would off would uh, kind of have that as its consistency check. If you fill in a unit, but you don't put in the value, or vice versa, you have a value but no unit, then that would that's invalid. You you forgot to put something in. We need to have both of those filled in uh, for it to really mean something. So you would get messages like this in the validation to say, there's an error. You have a, you know, a, a field that's blank. And in this case, it would be, you have a unit, but you don't have a number. It would say something similar if it was the other way around. You did not fill in the crop density unit that needs to be filled in. <clears throat> so that, that works great in a lot, of, a lot of areas to catch things where you just forget to fill something in. But in some areas of ARM, specifically when you're thinking of a protocol and providing instructions, it would be nice to be able to put in the unit to instruct the trialist what unit they should use. And so I've used this example here, something like the pest density or the crop density in an assessment. There's a variety of units they could take and as a protocol writer, you would want to um, give that instruction as to what unit should be done. So here I need my crop density in square meters, but I want the pest density done in percentage, for example. The trouble was if you put that in your protocol, now the ARM validation would come in and say, that's not valid. You need to fill in the value as well. So if that is how you filled in your protocol, when you create the trial and you want to send the trial to the trialist, these validation messages would be appearing and saying, well, this isn't valid because you haven't filled in that uh, value along with the unit. <clears throat> so the change to ARM that we made is to relax this requirement for certain fields. So we didn't do this everywhere, something like the formulation concentration, you're still gonna need both the unit and the value, but certain places kind of like this here um, <clears throat> that logically you would want to have uh, an instruction as the unit. Now you won't have these errors come up. 
So you'll be able to put in the density unit um, in an assessment column and you, there will be no validation error come up. The trick of course now, if, if you want to make sure that the trialist fills in the value, then use a study rule. So ARM, you know, ARM will no longer uh, yell at the, the protocol writer or the trialist if this situation arises. Um, so if you want to make sure that a value gets put in there, uh, add a study rule. And then the nice thing with that is now there's a condition associated with that study rule. So you can choose when that information gets filled in. And in our case, in an assessment column, really the only logical um, condition or time frame when it should get filled in is when you're putting in the data. So uh, that is the, the with assessment data there is, is kind of the, the main option you would have in an assessment column. Um, but application related information, um, you could have it some, something different. You know, there might be other, other sections in the, in the study where uh, you could choose another condition. But again, the goal here really is to enable the, the protocol writer to put in instructions um, without, without consequence later on, some negative consequence of putting in information. Uh, that was really what we found in these two situations. Um, it, and that was our target with the development is let's, let's eliminate the, the downside to putting in information. And so, um, between the review protocol entries and this change here, that was, that was really our goal. Um, maybe just real quick to show, let me go back into ARM and we could demonstrate that study rule adding. In case you're not familiar with how to add a study rule, um, let's just grab like that crop density here. I'll turn that on. So if we want to choose a unit, and then maybe I'll just use the very same example we had, the per square meter. Now, when we fill this in, like we said, there won't be any validation message that goes on because uh, this is totally valid to do this. But if we want to make sure that the trialist will fill it in, then in the numeric value here, right click. At the bottom, you can add a required study rule. And specifically in our case, we'll want to require that that value is filled in with assessment data. So as soon as there's assessment data put in this column, when we're in the trial, then that value will be required. And you'll see now that in our study rules editor, that added a study rule here for the crop density in that data column. And the condition is, you know, when does this rule apply? When will it kick in? It gets, it is applied as soon as there's assessment data entered into column number one. No questions yet, so I'll just keep moving down the list here. Uh, next thing I'd like to show is maybe moving over to the, the treatments editor. And so um, thinking the best practices, I, I was kind of looking at the treatment editor and thinking there's not a whole lot of flair <laughs> to, the, to the treatment editor. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, as far as you know, you're documenting uh, the products that are going to be be applied um, and all the information for that. Um, so, so maybe not a ton of of tricks per se, uh, but I did want to maybe point out a couple of study rules um, that that can be used on the treatment editor. Um, you have some some capability. Um, as once you've filled in the, the treatments to have some control over that information that's there. Um, for example, if uh, there was a really good reason why the trialist should not change any of the information 
in the treatments editor, there is an option to lock the values in a particular, particular column. Um, I think this one might be a case where it, it, you would really want to do this only if you had some situation arise in the past that was causing problems. Um, it probably isn't a best practice to just blindly lock everything. Like, oh yeah, this is all the information I want and there's no reason in the world that anyone should change any of it. So let's just lock it all. Well, then, you know, things happen. Um, maybe there's a change later on, maybe there's a misspray or, you know, something has to kind of be adjusted. Well, if you have locked everything down, you're, you're going to kind of put yourself in your corner a little bit with the file. So I, I would, I would use this function lightly, um, but there may be some cases where uh, things really should be locked down. And you would do that kind of on a per column basis. So here in, I'll just take formulation type as an example. If that's one that, that we really need to stay the same, you can use the right click in that column. It doesn't matter what row that you're on, um, but again, it's, it's going to be applied on that entire column all at once. You can right click and under the required section, you can lock the field to prevent edits. And so that field will really be locking, in this case, the entire column. So the formulation type is going to be locked. So you can see that there's a little lock symbol that'll kind of help you uh, visualize that and, and maybe help the trialist visualize it as well if they're like, well, how come I can't change this? Um, kind of try to, to draw the, their attention to it. It is grayed out a little bit as well. Uh, so a few ways to kind of um, highlight that. And you'll see then in the study rules editor that we have the formulation type being locked. And so you can lock kind of either direction. So in this case, Let's go back and kind of compare the right click uh, options here. So um, we'll go down to treatment seven now. And there's a couple of options for locking. Locking the field, you can lock the whole, uh, you can lock the treatment lines and you can lock the entire treatment. So there when I click the treatment, you'll see that both of these lines, because we had two components to treatment number seven, we actually locked both of those lines. So the entirety of treatment seven, every value that's in that treatment is locked. So you see how it's, it's grayed out. And again, on the study rules editor, we'll see that we have a separate rule that's locking all treatment fields and it's locking it for treatment line 12 and 13. So where we did the form type, that was specifically choosing one value to lock. And that was only in column 10. So just depending on the scope of what you want to lock down, um, you can choose uh, maybe we'll go up here to this form concentration value. Um, you can choose whether you're locking that particular field or the whole treatment lines. And if you needed to lock the, for example, we started with the formulation type. And when we added that, we chose it just for the cell we clicked into, but to have the entire column being locked, if that was the need, you, would, uh, you can just remove the reference to the treatment line and then that will have all of them. So the entire column of the formulation type would be locked. Again, uh, here I'm kind of showing all of the options, but I, I would just use caution with um, locking too much down. And the reason being, let's um, uh, pretend now we're in the trial. Once we get to the trial, we send this out. There's some you know, strange thing that happened uh, and we need to adjust the treatment list. Different product was shipped. Um, we decided we needed to change 
uh, the trial for some reason, the trialist is going to have no ability to adjust this information because it's locked. So the only way around that to, to update the trial is for the trialist to send back to the sponsor the trial. And the reason being in the study rules, the person that adds the rule is the owner of it. And it gives them the ability to remove the rule or change the rule. So the trialist won't have that ability, um, only those that are either the owner and anyone who's included in the permission to edit. Typically, we recommend everyone in my company to be the permission to the edit the rule. So if I were to add this rule, anyone else within my company could also adjust it if needed um, to have a little flexibility that I'm not the only person that could remove the rule if, if something uh, was needed to be changed. Certainly in this case, if you wanted to, you could make anyone uh, be able to remove that rule. Um, and that would provide that flexibility to allow the trialist, if they needed to, open it up. But in most cases, that kind of defeats the purpose of the, the rule in the first place. Uh, so that's kind of the best default there. The other type, uh, just real briefly, the other type of study rule that, that you can utilize on the treatments editor uh, would be to hide certain information. So one example would be maybe the, the product name, um, it should be confidential. And so there's some, maybe a, a coded uh, name that uh, can be used for, for the trialist to know, but then the, the name itself or some uh, certain details of the product should remain confidential and only available um, to be seen by the sponsor. So what we recommend doing there would be, uh, we'll use, we'll use the, the product name as an example. Um, typically the recommendation there would be to keep the treatment name as what is, can be visible to anyone. Um, that's kind of just a common field people typically use. So you can put in your, your coded name that's you know, not confidential and then utilize something like the description field. This is a general kind of open text field that can be used for, for anything. And if you're not already using the description, this can be a great place to put in the confidential name or the, the, the functionality or the, the information you would want. Now I ran out of space here. So I'm gonna to get to a small aside. If you go into the view options for your treatment editor, by default, the description field has 15 characters in it. That's how long the character, how many characters you can put in there. Um, but actually, ARM supports any number of characters between zero and 75. So if, if you were gonna start using the description for um, whatever confidential information you might want, you can loosen that up. So this setting column here, uh, oops. The setting column here is how many characters are allowed, um, but the range is really how many is, is possible. And so that description is just, short by default, but you can change that. And now I've changed my whole uh, sorting here. So let me click OK and going back to that. So now my description here. All of a sudden my room is slow here. Um, now we have more information I must have clicked something wrong. Let's try that one more time. The description, oh, it's, it's only two. I don't know how that happened. I think everything is kind of goofy right now, actually. I must have, sorting that must have uh, kind of messed that up. I know what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna close this protocol because I think I goofed something up there. 
yeah, it's not very happy with me at the moment. All right, I'll just open up, we'll open up this protocol here. It'll look pretty much the same since that's the one we used to merge. So it's got all the same information for us. Um, no, I just messed up all of my options pretty bad, didn't I? Treatment view. I'm just gonna load a view that I've used before because hopefully that will set things. Yes, that will set my values the way they should be. So hopefully that will fix it. Let's see if that puts things back to normal. There we go. All right. Sorry about that. Um, so again, the description is, is somewhat limited if you want to open it up. Let's see if I can do it without totally messing up my options. The description is 15, but I can open it up to a 75 if I want to add more length to that. I didn't get any error message this time, so I think I did it correctly. So confidential information, A, B, C, D, D, F, G. Um, you can see I've got more, more length there. <clears throat> so cycling back, the reason for that was, you know, here we'll give this the coded coded name, um, what, whatever it needs, whatever it needs to be there. And then the, the official information um, that you would want only visible for your own company, um, put it into either the description, or if you're already using the description, I believe we have comments, there's like a comment one, I think there's also a comment two that might be just not visible at the moment. Either way, kind of find find a column that you can put that information into. <clears throat> and now when we right click, we can do a hidden field. So instead of being in the required, it's its own type of rule. It's a hidden field. So this is going to hide the entire description column because I'm clicked into the description and it doesn't matter what row I'm in, um, right click and apply a hidden field. And who should I hide this information from? I should hide it if the person viewing the file is not me, or I can hide it from anyone who's not in my company. So I'm gonna choose if not in my company, that's kind of, again, a kind of a best practice in most cases, um, you'll want that. And so you'll see here, I can, nothing visually changed on the screen. I can still see that information because I am the owner of that rule. But down here, we have created a hidden field study rule. So that way the description will be not visible to any person who opens this trial if they are not in my company. So again, there's, there's this owner ID that is linked to your license. And each license in a company, there's actually, internally we have a company ID that keeps track of all of the licenses within a company. So that is the, the logic there that ARM uses when someone else opens up this trial, it will determine, are you in the same company as Matt who added this rule? And if you are not, you will not see this column. So just to demonstrate that, let me save this protocol. And I'm actually going to close my ARM and I'm going to open ARM with a different license. So I've got a couple of test licenses on, on my computer so I can, can act like myself or I can act like a, a different person. So here, instead of my license I was logged in as, um, I have just a testing license here that's technically from a totally different company. So this would be um, similar to have, you know, having the trialist open up this file. And let's see, I don't know if it's opening up on the other screen or where it went. It's trying to display. There we go. 
got lost in the abyss of my uh, multiple monitors here. So I'm now a, a different person. I'm not in the same company. So now when I open up this file, it's asking about report settings. I'm not too worried about report settings here. As a different person who's not in the same company as the person who added this rule, now there is no description column. If I try to change my view, I want to view all fields, still no description column. It's not possible for me to view that information. Even in my view options, the description column is not available at all to, to be seen. So that, that hidden field um, can be a great function, not just in the treatments. You can do that um, in, in the protocol description. If there was an, some other location where there was some confidential information, um, I think the treatments is probably the most common one though that you can still have all of your information. Maybe the lot code would be another good example where the, the trialist doesn't need to know that information. It's really internal, um, have that hidden. But that way, when the trial comes back to the sponsor, all of the information is still there and it's visible to the, the sponsor. It's just not visible to, to the trialist or somebody else outside the company that opens the trial up. There was a question. Um, as we were looking at the view options and changing the, the size of the description. So that functionality of increasing the, the possible size of that field, it is specific to the treatment fields. So the question was about like the trial ID. That one is on the header. That's in the protocol description. So you'll see over here, we really just have the, the option to turn things on or off in the, the header and the protocol description. So th that information, let's just go to the header to see that trial ID, that is, is hard coded as, as a limit. Um, so you can see the limit if you hold down the Alt key and press F1 you can see some, some gory details about, about the programming behind the, the field. Most of this, I don't even really totally understand, but I do know it'll tell you the, the length. So it'll tell you that there's 35 characters that'll fit in the trial ID. Um, if you had a, a reason where there wasn't enough characters for a field, shoot us an email. Um, it, it, it's possible for, the, for us as a programming change to increase the size of a field if it was necessary. Um, but, but kind of what we showed today was specific to the treatment editor um, being able to adjust the view as to how, how many characters you have. And a lot of them are already using the maximum. So the type has to be eight. You know, the lot code by default, I think is, is 20. So it's already as large as necessary, but um, depending on your, your situation, you could adjust some of those. Um, but I think the treatment name and the description are the ones most commonly you know, needing to be adjusted. A great question. All right, so we covered the treatments editor. Uh, we kind of showed the protocol description uh, throughout the, the merge and the the review protocol entries. So really the last area um, that we haven't spent a ton of time in is the assessment data. And, and really um, kind of the best practices there would be to utilize SEs. And so we've done, done some recent webinars on the SEs. I'll go kind of briefly in case you were, were involved in those and we're, we're running out of time anyway. So um, you can get the, the full experience if you check out our recordings. Uh, we did one just a few weeks back actually um, about SEs. So if, if you haven't encountered these before, 
we'll give you a nice quick overview here. You can dive in further uh, in, in the previous recording. But an SE is a, uh, really it's a saved description of an assessment header. So when you perform an assessment, you describe what was done and then it is, is very advantageous to use that same description each time you perform that same rating, that same action out in the field, whether it's in the same trial or all of the different trials that are being performed. And so when we're saving that information, you can choose one or more data columns. You specify which rows, which components that you described you actually want to save and then also any study rules that are in those columns can come with as well. So that's really the technical definition of an SE, a standard evaluation. Um, maybe a, a more uh, familiar um, term to call it would be a, a virtual clipboard. So I think the most common example when you're, when you're working with data columns, the most common performed action is, okay, well, I did the same assessment last week. So let me just go to column number one and I'll just grab this information. I'll select all of these rows and click copy. And then I'll move to column number three and click paste. And then I'll adjust if I need to change the rating date to be today's date or whatever is slightly different, then I'll adjust it. That's basically what we're doing with an SE except that now you can paste across different trials, across different people, if you share that file with others, and you don't need to have that other column available to you. So it could be the assessment you did in the last trial now is available to you immediately without having to open another ARM window and log in and find the column and copy paste. You're basically doing that copy once and putting that into a file as a virtual clipboard then that you can paste again and again and again in all of your different trials. So the goal of that, of course, is to standardize. And um, in, in the theme here really of um, protocol writing, the, the goal would be to standardize across all of the trial lists. So, um, having these SEs makes it easy for the trialist to just load that SE. And now they're describing that assessment that's performed the same way every time. And every trialist using that same SE, now all of the trialists will describe that same assessment the same way. You can take that one level higher as well now if that SE that you used you can give to your colleague who's writing protocols for another experiment, but doing they do something similar. Now all of those trials can have the same description as well. So suddenly now across your whole company, everyone writing protocols or performing trials, they can all use that same SE file and have that standardization. And of course, that is, is basically liquid gold when it comes to a multi-trial analysis. If anyone's used the ST, the summary across trials, um, it becomes very clear very quickly why you would want to have consistent headers. Um, we spend a lot of time in, in training of ST of how to deal with inconsistent um, descriptions. And, and as soon as we finish that session, it's, it's very painfully clear that um, it'd be really nice if these were all done the same, if they were described the same. Uh, they certainly could be performed the same in the field, but if they're not entered the same, it's all a bunch of jumbo um, from, from a, the computing standpoint of trying to combine them again. And finally, we're, we're kind of making a big push on this feature because of ARM Mobile. Um, if you joined us a couple of weeks back, we had a, a series of, of webinars on that, that new, uh, new feature we have, new tool um, that we have. And a big part of that now is that's the easiest way to add a new assessment to start taking notes in the Air mobile app on, on your phone in the field. So that a great time saver as well 
um, in addition to all the, the standardization. So real quick, I, I won't have time to, to demonstrate all of these, but just some, some kind of tips and tricks on, on using SEs is don't start from scratch. It can sound really complicated as we talk about how to build it and how you can, can make it your own, um, but we actually have a master list of SE files. Um, you'll find that in the SE definitions. I'll just real quickly go into ARM to show that in your protocol description or it's also in the site description, there's a section called SE definitions. And the, the list associated with SE name, there's a master list, soon will be called just display all. There's a master list of seven or 800 SEs. There is just a ton of them here um, to get you started at the very least. You could certainly use these or maybe you know, load one and then change it to make it your own and then save it. Um, whatever you do, don't just start from scratch. It'd be a pretty big um, project to just start with an empty slate and try to come up with what you'd wanna build. Um, so utilize the, the list here. If, if the list doesn't quite have what you want or you're trying to set out and do it yourself, um, you can use that merge that we just demonstrated. Um, and, and take last year's trial or last year's protocol that had the headers that you described and merge that into a, a new study and, and start to tweak and, and standardize. The uh, SE description, and this one is really not specific to only SEs, but a good, um, a good thing I wanted to mention um, related to the assessment data editor. is the description versus the SE description. So by default, previously, the description field, I think, was visible, uh, typically, and the SE description was not. Turns out that was a mistake, and um, I've been training people wrong ever since as well. This description is actually intended to be a crop description. So it's, it's actually really coded to be part of this section of information related to the crop. So you would choose the crop code and the, the crop name, then you could specify a particular variety. And if you needed some sort of description related to the crop, that field was available for that. Then we had the SE description which is meant to be the human readable description of the assessment. So I, I think the naming here throws people off because it certainly seems like you would only use it if you're using SEs. Well, that's not true. It really is meant to, even if you're not using SE files at all, you can use this field as a simple description of what was being performed. So that's, that's a big PSA for everyone. Um, if, if you've taken any of my training before, I was leading you down the wrong path. <laughs> so um, hopefully just encourage people to transition from using this description, um, which would typically be what people would do. You, you would type in stand count um, or whatever, you know, whatever is easiest to read as a human being. Uh, to, to go with all of this technical description of what was done. Um, move that information from description into the SE description. Again, whether or not you're using SEs. Uh, so if I was creating a brand new column, not dealing with an SE at all, it doesn't even matter. I would want to use the SE description as my um, you know, human readable text, and then I would fill in the um, whatever description it is, you know, that technical description of the assessment. So use use the SE description and not the description. Um, if, if you're used to using description, I would just probably do this. Click on the description heading to take all of your existing descriptions and then just copy 
and then you could paste right into the SE description. Mine's reversed. I've got all of my SE descriptions filled in, so I don't want I don't want to paste, but it would copy all of your descriptions into the right field, the SE descriptions. And then the last bullet point here um, <clears throat> is to really use study rules. And, and the study rules will come with an SE. So in addition to the standardization of the information you're putting into the header, you can also standardize the rules that are associated with a column. So you know the most common example I use is the rating date. It's the most obvious thing that everyone for any assessment that's done should have a rating date. When was this performed? So, so having that being required as soon as data is put in is kind of a slam dunk no brainer. But for you know different types of assessments, there might be other slam dunk, I need you to fill this in type of information. And so you can include those rules in a column. And then when you build the SE, those rules can be built into the SE. So every time that the SE is loaded, those rules are added to those new columns to ensure that consistency, not just in the information you filled in, but the requirements that you have of the trial list as well will be included in that file. Right, so that's the end of my tips and the end of my time. Sorry for going a few minutes over, um, but I appreciate you all joining us. Uh, if you have questions, I can I can hold on for for a minute or two, um, but certainly want don't want to hold hold anyone hostage. So um, I appreciate you all joining us today, and hopefully look forward to to seeing you on some future webinars. We've got a few a few of them all related to protocols. Um, in, in the coming weeks. So thanks everyone. Now, like I said, I'll hang on the line. If you're typing a question, I won't cut you off, but.